So, so I'm going to come right out the gate with the whining. Oh, God. Uh, let's do it. Let's all get right. it out of the way. Right, no, I'm sorry. Whining. This thing has been getting crazy good reviews all over the place from all I've heard, okay? Everybody's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, The Dark Knight Rises is the greatest. It's fantastic. And I'm not saying it's not a good movie. Uh -huh. It's a good movie. It's a very good movie, in fact. But the writing is just not on par with the other ones. No, not at all. That's one of the things I noticed, too. Yeah. Especially with the over-explanation. The one part that stuck out in my head, she's talking to the guy, and he's like, where is it? He's like, oh, the clean slate. The one that'll get rid of everything. The one that will blah, blah, blah. And he goes into this five-minute explanation of what she already knows she's looking for. And what we already know she's yeah. looking for. Yeah, you don't we need to over-explain it. That could have been said in a single sentence. Yeah. All the dialogue was overwritten. I will say I was extremely surprised by Anne Hathaway. Yeah, I thought she I did an hate amazing her. job. In I didn't hate her. I don't particularly like fight sequences where a 104-pound woman beats up six grown men, but right. for the most part, didn't mind her. I thought Anne Hathaway was fine. She did a good job. Not exceptionally praiseworthy. And quite frankly, can't hold it up against Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Sorry, that's like almost impossible to beat. Michelle Pfeiffer perfected Catwoman. And I hate to do that to a movie. Because I am the guy who's always on about how you have to judge a movie based on its own merit, not based on everything that came before it. And I really believe that. I do. It's not that I'm rescinding that. It's just that I'm sorry. You're going to come into a movie. It's part of a series. It's not like it's a stand alone film. So we've got expectation upon expectation upon expectation. Then you put her up against Christian Bale, one of the best actors working today, and Tom Hardy, another one of the best actors working right. today. And as good as she was, and she, I honestly believe, was as good as she could have been, it just doesn't hold up. Since we're comparing way better than Halle Berry's Catwoman, <laughs> which isn't hard to do, so... Yeah, I got a feeling my daughter could do Catwoman better than Halle Berry did Catwoman. Yeah. I haven't seen the movie. I could do Catwoman better than Halle Berry. I do feel like Tom Hardy totally stole the show, though. He made that movie really what it was. That scared the out of me at the beginning, though. They did his voice different in the very beginning. It was a little bizarre. His voice was almost a little comic, almost and it really scared me. Like cartoon villain, kind of, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And I thought, oh, God, this isn't what's happening. Because I remember the voice they did in the original trailer, because I didn't watch the trailer, but I did hear the trailer, because I deliberately cover my eyes during trailers. I saw you do I that during Django. Yeah. I was wondering yeah. what you were doing. And I remember his voice was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. You know, like almost uninterpretable, which I actually really loved that idea. And then I heard that Nolan went in and redid the voice work for Tom Hardy. And then that scene starts the movie. I was like, oh, sh are yeah. you kidding me? But it did get better. There were some moments in that just movie where you, you did not have any idea what he said, though. Yeah, there was a couple times. Like, where wait, what the he just said yeah, yeah. I got everything. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm used to listening to accents all the time. I love the escalation in this movie because in a third part of a trilogy, you got to take it over the top. And they really did that with flying colors. I got to give it to them there. I'm just happy that they went the full length with the thing. They just did the like, what is it, two and a half, two hours and forty five minutes. Just, if you're gonna do that, you got to do it right, and you need more time. And I'm just glad they went the full three hours. Yeah, you thing. don't want to cram it all into a ninety yeah. minute movie. And oh, I got to say, awesome. even at the length it was, there were parts that felt like they were gone over too quickly. That's true. Like, I could watch a whole movie, I feel like, about the Bane backstory that they kept going to, yeah. and it kept you wanting more. Anyway, like I said, loved the escalation. Loved that they went over the top. I mean, you knew Batman was going to pull it out and everything like that, but they did a great job of yeah. digging Batman into a hole. The don't last you, don't hour. Don't just say pull it off. Pull it out just sounds <laughs> sexual. <laughs> Only if you're a freaking pervert. <laughs> anyway, continue. The last hour of that movie was just pure thriller. They just went all out, and I really, really liked that. It yeah. did justice to the trilogy and that movie actually made me like The Dark Knight more. Like, once you see it as the whole big picture, it made a whole lot of sense. And I, I think Chris Nolan did an amazing job just with the whole trilogy in general. How does Cillian Murphy keep making it in these movies? I know. I actually really like it. Cillian Murphy was great. I am so glad that he was there playing the role he played. <laughs> I love the tattered clothes, the crazy look that he had going No, I love bringing him back. I love that he keeps coming back into the story. <laughs> and the Scarecrow was my favorite villain growing up, like, when I used to read the comics and stuff. Mm -hmm. I really like that you keep bringing it back. Wasn't he in the second one for like, what, five minutes yeah, or like something like that? Just right at the very beginning yeah. he was in the second one, yeah. Yeah, Dude. love that. And I, I was honestly like, I'm going to cut that just because the reveal is too good. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. right. You're, just have me say, who are they going to be? Spoiler omega. I'm going to have it cut that for the, because the reveal <laughs> is too good. <laughs> I got to say, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, once again, oh. knocks it out of the park. Dude, I love oh, the man. I, great. If I was gay, I would be a stalker. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> great, man. Every, everything, even Brick. Like, Brick was such a weird, obscure movie. He was awesome. Yeah. And the look You're not going to start bad-mouthing 
Brick. I oh, love Brick. Okay, Brick is good. one of my favorite movies. I was ever. gonna say because that's the movie that made Joseph. Oh Gordon yeah, Levin. that's one of my favorite independent films ever. Michael Caine. Michael Caine was fantastic. Like, that guy is so Michael good. Caine really was turned it out of like acting. Oh yeah. Michael Caine's a great actor, and I love him in this movie. I love him as Alfred. I think he was the best choice of all possible choices for Alfred. But I gotta say, man, he was cranking up the Cockney in this movie. Did I miss that in the previous movies? Because it seemed like he really just dialed it up. Dialed what up exactly? The Cockney accent. <laughs> yeah, it was a little extreme. No, it seemed the same to me. Did it? Maybe it was because the Bane thing had put me off of, you know, like right from the beginning. And it, it did take me a little while to recover from that. Like right after that opening scene, I was like, oh, tell me this isn't the one where he drives it into the ground, you know? Yeah. And then they went through all this really fast recap stuff, and then the stuff with Alfred, and then they like introduced jokes of Gordon Levitt, but then seemed to be skipping over him a little bit there. And I thought, well, that's a weird thing to do, like bring him in as an incidental yeah. character. And then, of course, they ended well, the up last, correcting the all of that. The hour of that film made up for any kind of shortcomings. That no, I, like. I I gotta say, after the first 20 minutes, everything after that point was it, fantastic. It just, it just started out a little slow, but, but it, it just, really caught its stride. Yeah, yeah it, it, the pacing was just weird in that opening. I really didn't particularly it. like the opening scene, except for I did love the fact that Littlefinger from Game of Thrones was in this movie. I felt like the, I don't know, they were trying to do like a Dark Knight introduction scene and like you said, there was something weird about it, it just didn't feel right, it, it wasn't as tense. It was just off. Like, take, for example, the pacing of the scene where they introduced the Joker. The opening scene of Dark Knight was yeah. fantastic. It wasn't overly talky. It was very cinematic. It was powerful. And we introduced him through actions. And they were kind of talking Bane into the role. Like I said, this is a writing issue. The writing of this movie really bothered me on a lot of levels. Not because it wasn't good. It was a perfectly good script. It's because the previous scripts were so much better. Right. And like I said, there is a few I do feel many... bad about that. There's a few but, too many one-liners in there for my liking. That's what I really liked about the second movie is that one-liners really felt hollow because the Joker's one-liners were so sadistic and insane <laughs> that if anyone else did one-liners it would have been stupid. So they like, had to cut them out completely. I have, I have a question. At what point did Batman find the time to rappel down the side of the bridge and paint gasoline? That's exactly what I was thinking. That's a way to waste your time yeah he comes back in <laughs> such peril you would think he'd be more interested in disarming that bomb <laughs> yeah than sending a giant just message. a second i'll be right back i have to go get my repelling gear <laughs> first you gotta fly up there then you gotta repel down and you gotta create the grease trail to get the fire there in the it's just yeah, and all the way down to the ice, and then everything. That was one. That was one of there. That yeah. was one of those works things. out right. Yeah, I hope he gets this far without <laughs> falling through. What well, would have made it more realistic is if he just said, "Light it," and he thrown the thing down and be. No, no, it's over there. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like there was a big puddle of black oil or something yeah. for him to light. Yeah, he just knows where to throw it. Like, all right. <laughs> it's nitpicky. I mean, yeah. come on, we are talking about Batman. Yeah, that's here. all you can really do with Batman. I mean, mm -hmm. that movie was epic in every respect, yeah. and you really only can nitpick. But the whole is so good. Even with the nitpicks, even with the, the being thrown off oh, right at the beginning of the mm -hmm. movie, it's still a really good movie. That only dragged it back from being a perfect movie, really. If they tightened up the right and if they paced the beginning better and stuff like that, it could have really been a perfect movie. Yeah. very few perfect there, ones out there. There are. Yeah, it's just sure. such a hard thing to do, and the crazy part is, is Nolan actually does have some perfect films under his belt, so to expect him to pull them all out as, as perfect, I mean, <laughs> it's, that's just unreal. And writing them all himself, you know. That's off to Christopher Nolan, because he maintains a, a sterling reputation. Yeah. Despite the film's failings, it's still rock solid. Yeah. yeah, it's a totally rad movie. His take on Bane was phenomenal. He completely did respect to Bane. You know, I won't go too into it, but the two things that Bane really did in the comics that made him really famous in the comics he did in the movie which I was really happy about. As a man who's never read a single one of the Bane comics I loved Bane. Yeah. I just wanted more and I just enjoyed him start to finish well I, I take that back. I enjoyed him 20 minutes into finish. Yeah. <laughs> I just enjoyed not that seeing first... him as a Neanderthal. <laughs> yeah seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Joel Schumacher thing. Nothing <laughs> at all. Anyway, all right. we rate on a scale of 1 to 10. 0 being absolute garbage, completely worthless, do anything to avoid. 10 being absolutely perfect film, and 5 being total ambivalence. Absolutely no feeling one way or the other. So, ratings. No, oh, I'm going to have to give this guy a 9, man. Like, yeah, I was going to go 8, but I think I'm going to have to go 8.5. Once again, I'm the low man on the total. I gave here. Savages an 8. I have to give this movie a 9. Yeah, Seth's always the overrater, and I'm always Good the low man. man. No, I'm sorry, I'm going 8. The, the stuff in 
in the beginning kept it from being a nine. It could have been a nine or a ten, but too many writing flaws. You say you too, say that too bad a pacing at the beginning of the you movie. You say five is ambivalence, six is okay, seven is solidly seven good, is eight solid. is solidly is very really good. good, nine is exceptional, and okay. ten is absolutely flawed. I would say it was exceptional. I had that much I, fun. I felt like it could have been, but the opening stuff really bothered me a lot, and the writing throughout the dialogue was overwritten. I totally agree with the dialogue, but I think I still stick with an eight point five. Though I think it's a little better than an eight, not yeah. quite a nine. I'm going eight. All right. Thank you for watching. Click the annotations bar down below to go to our channel. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. We got links down in the description. And tune in next week when we will be watching... What comes out next week? I don't know. Anyway, the yeah. Facebook tells what's coming out next week. And you're going to see it at the end of this video if you stick around anyway. So, peace out. <laughs> I always feel like I should say something to end it. And then such I just a, feel like a douche. It's after such a douche move, dude. It's such a douche <laughs>